Hi everyone, today I will be showing you the steps you can follow to bring a still photograph to life and turn it from a 2D flat image into a really cool 3D scene using the parallax effect in CapCut. So first thing we need to do is slice the image into different layers. And to do that, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop. Once you start Photoshop, go ahead and import the image. Unlock the background layer, and we're going to be going through the process layer by layer. So let's start by separating the couple and the bench here. First, duplicate image layer by hold alt key and move layer up. Select the couple layer, and now go ahead and choose the pen tool. As you may have guessed, we're now going to draw a mask around the couple and their bench. I won't be including any shadows in my mask, and will let that be a part of the ground instead, which I will be isolating in a separate layer later on as well. Once you're done drawing the mask, go over here and click Add Layer Mask. Click one more time on the same icon to create a vector mask. Now I want to erase some areas that are not part of my subject here, as I can still see some sections of the ground in my image. One way to do that is using the brush tool. Let's go ahead and change to that. Currently, my background color is set to white, and my foreground color is set to black, which means we're able to use the brush like an eraser. Here's a really cool trick you can use to speed up the process. If you want to erase along a straight line, you can click on the end of either side, hold shift, and click once on the other end. You can definitely take advantage of that to avoid causing any rough edges while you're erasing. Also note that anytime you make a mistake and wish to change the brush back to the drawing mode, you can just press X once, which will swap the background color back to white, and you can now use the brush tool to bring back the parts which you've deleted by mistake. Keep in mind that some masking techniques such as this one are really time-consuming and require a lot of patience. So to avoid having a super long tutorial, I will be speeding some of these parts up, but I will do my best to explain the main techniques that you need to be aware of in order to be able to split the layers seamlessly. Now that we're done with the couple and bench layer, we can move on to the remaining subjects. Enable the original layer once again, duplicate it, rename couple layer to avoid selecting the wrong layer accidentally. To isolate the trees, I could use the same masking technique by drawing around using the pen tool, but since the trees have a lot of details, especially around the branches, using that method would take me ages, so instead, I'm gonna use the magic wand tool. Let's bring the tolerance up to somewhere around 70, and now click anywhere inside the tree. What this does is that the magic wand tool will include other pixels that are close in color into your selection. Now go down here and click add layer mask. As you can see, the branches part isn't so bad, yet the magic wand tool did include parts that we don't need, as well as remove some areas which are actually part of our subject, so we're gonna have to fix that manually now. To do that, with the layer mask selected, go ahead and change to the brush tool. Make sure the foreground is set to black, and now we can start erasing around the trees. If you want to double check if you're not leaving any spots behind, to see the branch better, just decrease the opacity of the original image, then use brush to make the branch visible. That's a really cool trick I learned along the way. If you guys know about any other cool tips yourself, don't hesitate to share them with all of us in the comments below. Once you're done with that, there are still a few parts which I want to restore. So let's hit X again, and start drawing on the areas which the magic wand tool excluded. Once you're done with that, you'll end up with both trees in one layer all cleaned up, and now, we can move on to the train part. Once again, select the original layer, duplicate it, and hide the other layers so we can focus solely on this one, as we did with the couple and the trees. The only difference here, is that there are other elements blocking our subject, such as the fence and the trees. The challenging part here is to actually recreate parts of the train which are covered by other elements. To do that, you need to switch over to the stamp tool, which will allow you to grab samples of your image and paste them elsewhere. Make sure the train layer is selected, set the brush opacity to 100, and for example, here I can tell for sure that behind this fence, I should be able to see solid orange color similar to what's clearly visible on top here. So I can just use the stamp tool to grab samples from the plain orange area, by holding alt and left click, and simply paste it over the elements that you want to remove. Always keep an eye on this little white cross here, which works as a reference to what you're copying. That's pretty much the main technique you need to use here to paint over and recreate these block sections of the train. Of course, it does get a bit complicated at some parts. Keep in mind that this doesn't have to look absolutely perfect since the train will be animated and you will barely notice any flaws. Now that you're finished painting the train, 
Simply go ahead and draw a mask around the train using the pen tool. Take all the time you need here to make sure that you're drawing a really clean mask. Once you're done, click here on Add Layer Mask, click one more time to add a vector mask, and again, similar to what we did with the couple and bench layer, with the layer mask selected, open a new Photoshop project, and near the number 1920, add star and 5. You can go higher if you want to have bigger train, then drag your train into it. We're going to erase the parts of the train which we're supposed to be able to see through. To make it even easier, you can use the magic wand tool to select those parts since the sky which you can see through the windows is almost plain in color. Just make sure that the contiguous option is enabled, and you can even select multiple areas together by holding down shift prior to each selection. This way, erasing with the brush tool will be limited within that selection. Now all that's left to do here is to extend the layer so we can create a longer train. To do that, select the train layer, duplicate it, select the layer mask, choose the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle around the front part here, and press delete key to remove the front part. And as you can see now, I'm moving this copy towards the back here to extend the train. Now you can just repeat the same process. Simply duplicate the train copy into as many layers as you wish depending on how long you want the train to be. And by moving each of these copies to the back, you can extend the image. So let's select the very first train layer, bring it over here, and flip horizontal. And simply move the layer all the way to the end to create the back section of the train. And now you can export it as PNG file. Duplicate the original image and put all images in one group, then hide it. Let's now focus on getting the fence separated into its own layer. And similar to what we did with the train, you can go ahead and use the stamp tool to recreate the covered parts of the fence. You can also try and use the content aware fill feature, which is really powerful and meant to remove elements of your scene very easily. However, it didn't work pretty well for me here since the image is kind of complex, hence why I'm doing it manually instead. But you can always try that first because when it works, it really saves you a lot of time. Once you're done stamping, go ahead and create a layer mask. To isolate the fence properly, we need to erase everything around it. This time, I'm going to use the quick selection tool, which in my opinion, is way smarter than the magic wand tool. All you need to do is draw around the area you want to select and the tool will automatically select similar tones and stops when it finds image edges. After that, go ahead and select the brush tool to erase inside the selection. Keep on doing this until you manage to isolate the entire fence and you'll end up with a nice clean mask as you can see here. Then export them as a PNG layer. Just hide all layers except the one you want to export. Click the link in the description to download this tutorial files to make your own video. Import your files in CapCut. First, Import one of the PNG layers to set the ratio with its size. Put the city background on the first layer. Drag other layers on top of each other. And the tree should be on top. Before we move any layer, go to Modify and Free the layer to get better control of layers. But the train should be under the fence. By the way, I exported one fence layer too. To put it behind the train for the other side, you can duplicate the ground layer too. But I just want to do it without the ground. And why did I add a second fence? Because of these. Like here, you see on the screen. So, scale the city image and move it down a little bit to align with the fence and wall. Add the train layer to the timeline too, and select the train layer then scale it and put it on the right side. First, let's animate the train. Move it out of the shot, create a keyframe, then go to the end of the layer and move it to the left side out of the shot. Select all layers and increase the duration to 10 seconds. Then move the train layer to the right side to have a little empty shot at the beginning and let the train come into the shot with a delay. You can cut extra frames to understand the train animation better too. Then create a compound clip. In the basic part, let's add motion blur and set both numbers to 50 and wait for the process to be done. And remember, if you don't like the speed or you think the train isn't big enough, just open Photoshop and make another project, and duplicate it a few times again. Now let's see the result. Yeah, this train needs Spider-Man to stop it. By the way, let's get back to our road. 
let's add a white background to the city layer. In the mask part, use the horizontal mask and increase the feather to get a little dust in the background to get more perspective. And decrease opacity to get better dust. This is before and after adding the white background to our scene. To make it more realistic, let's add a shadow to our ground when the train is passing. First duplicate train, mirror it, and in basic part, rotate it 180 degree. In timeline, move it to the top of the ground layer, then move it down under the wall. Then go to blend mode and choose multiply. After that, go to adjustment, decrease brightness, and move the bottom point to the left side too to get dark black. Get back to basic and uncheck uniform scale and decrease the height to get a better perspective. Now reduce opacity because we don't want a strong shadow. Now let's add some effects. For the background, add a blur effect. Decrease the intensity a little. For the train shadow, use motion blur. In effect settings, set horizontal to 51. Then use edge glow and put it on top of all layers and decrease the intensity of the glow to three or four. It depends on your brain. How dreamy do you want to see your world? For the last effect, add a hazy effect. Reduce the intensity of the blur to three or five to get a little blur, or how should I say it, like an unfocused area. Let's change the color of the layers to get a better result. For the background, reduce contrast to get more dust and gray. Add shadow to make the shadow a little stronger. Add clarity and particles to get a little noise and make edges more clear and cleaner. At the end, add a vignette to get a little shadow around the corners. Add a little blur to the fence layer behind the train to focus more on important subjects like the train and couples. Most important part of our video, how to animate our camera. You can animate layers one by one, but it will take so much time. So let's use the lens zoom effect and put it on top of layers. Increase duration, reduce range, and set it to two, and set speed to one. Let's check the animation. At the end of the animation, it does zoom back. It's good, but if you don't like the zoom back, press the O key on the keyboard at this time and export it. You can move the effect to the right side to start zooming when the train is passing in front of the camera. It all depends on you when you wanna start zooming, but for me, zooming from the beginning of the video is good. And if you want to learn more videos like this on CapCut, just watch this playlist. If you found this video helpful, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. And as always, stay creative. <laughs>